Hello, so I'm back at my mum's house and she has another job for me and has some storage in her dining room. What she has is a load of placemats and coasters. When you're at my mum's, you have to use a placemat or a coaster and she needs some storage for them. It's a bit of a weird shaped room, this dining room. It's a very old building and the only wall that's kind of free is got a massive curve to it. But what I have is a bit of wall over here that I can make something shallow for. So it's back to the workshop to get it done. What I've got to make this out of is some pallet wood. Unfortunately, this stuff is full of nails. So the first job is to get them punched out. This is going to be a pretty simple construction. Two long bits are going to be the shelves. One for the wine and for the placemat to go on, the other for some wine glasses. So I've got my measurement how long it needs to be. I'm going to knock off a few centimetres because I want end bits. And then I'm going to get two bits cut to length on the table saw. <laughs> I've got the two bits for the shelves, now I need a side piece so it can go flush with the bottom shelf and then I want to stick up the top so that the wine bottle and the placemats can go into it. I think if it sticks up about 10 centimetres, so now I can get this cut or two side pieces cut. Right, with the side bits cut, so I just worked out that I wanted them to stick up by 10 centimetres, but then I totally forgot what my plan was. And that was to put a bit on the front to kind of close this all off. So the 10 centimetres is not gonna work because this bit of wood is about eight centimetres. So I can just move this bit up though, because the gap didn't make any difference really. And that will go on the front. There's gonna be no backer piece on this. The back of it will just be the wall. So now I can get this front piece cut to length and that should be all the bits cut I need. This front piece is need to be as long as one of the shelves with the thickness of the two sides added on. So I can get that marked out and then cut. With all the bits cut, now I need to get the bits for the wine glasses to go. So I've crunched the numbers and I'm gonna get six wine glasses onto here. So I need to mark out where they need to go. My calculations are actually wrong and I've got seven glasses, but uh, that's even better because I was only supposed to do six. It'd be fine. Anyway, now that's done, I'm gonna mark out the center point onto each one of these lines, which is four centimeters. I now need to drill a hole on these center lines. So I've dug out an 18 mil forcing bit, and I'm gonna get that chucked up in the drill and drill through on all of these seven now center points.
I've got all the holes in this now, so I'm going to get a square and line them up with the edge of the holes and draw a line joining up the side of the hole to the edge of the board because we need to cut this open so we can actually get a wine glass in and out. Now I've made this mistake before because of the throat capacity on a bandsaw from the center to this side I've got this and then I'm going to flip it over and draw the other ones on the underside because I'm going to need to do this from both sides when I get to the bandsaw. Even with going in from both sides, my bandsaw wouldn't quite reach the centre one, so I'm going to grab a handsaw and get that cut. To neaten this all up and to help the wine glass stem sit a bit better, I'm going to grab a small roundover bit and get it installed in the router. I've got all the components cut, but before I can get it all put together, I'm gonna to give it all a sand down. Time to get this all put together. So I'm gonna start by getting the bit that the glasses go into onto the sides. And I'm gonna draw some pilot holes in the side and then get it glued and screwed on. I've got these side pieces on with screws because you're not really gonna see the screws on the sides. But now for the front piece, and you would see the screws if I had those. So I'm just gonna get some glue on and then put a couple of pin nails in to hold it in place. Now for the other shelf, so I can get that lined up flush with that piece I've just installed and get some screws in from the side again. I'm gonna get a couple more nails along the front just to lock this in place. All right, so that's it, about done. But the color's very light where I've sanded down the pallet wood, but what I have is some medium oak wood stain. This is the stuff I use to do the shelves in my kitchen, so I'm gonna get a coat of that on it here. One of the good things about this spirit wood dye is it dries really quickly. Now I want to get some wax on and I've got some KB wax. 
So I'm just going to get some of this put on and then buffed off. So that's all I'm doing on this here. Now I need to go and get it installed, but you might have noticed I've not actually come up with any way of attaching it to the wall. And that's because looking at where it needs to go, there's a light switch and a cable there, and I didn't take a detector with me, so I don't know where the cable runs exactly. But what I have is some keyhole plates. I'm gonna take those with me, and then I can sort it all out at my mum's house. Back at my mum's and I can look at getting this installed. So I've checked the wall and there's no cables to worry about. So I've just got the keyhole plates installed on the back. Now, if I don't drop my pencil, I can get a level on this and mark out where the screws need to go. Now I can get this drilled, get some plugs in and get it screwed onto the wall. Okay, it's on the wall so I can get it filled up, but I know I'll have done this wrong and it'll get all rearranged in a second, but I will just do it for demonstration purposes. That's it all done. Solved a couple of storage problems in a room that's difficult to make things for. So now I've just got to check with the boss, make sure it's happy. So thanks for watching. Thanks my patrons and please subscribe for more videos. Mm -hmm.